Okay, we're just gonna move this. Put this over here. Put this, put this down, and Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, hi. Welcome to the video. Before we start this production, I need to make a couple of things clear. I can't believe that I even have to say this, but to all the white and non-black liberals and leftists watching this video, <clears throat> do not leave any anti-black comments on this video. You can make jokes about these conservatives that I'm about to mention, but for the love of God, have some restraint and do not be anti-black towards them. I know anti-blackness is the norm, but chill out on that. Also, quick disclaimer for this video because anything negative that you can think of is probably going to get brought up in this video. I'm talking about all the isms, phobics, and nicks here. So yeah, quick disclaimer for that, but now it's time to get into the confusing nature of black conservatives. Enjoy the show, and roll that intro. Oh my god, that was lame. You can excuse racism. So, I want mommy, I want milk, I want to be held, I want to be comforted. And if you do not do all these things immediately, I will ruin your life. Hi, my name is Markiplier, and I've never done drugs. Paw Patrol is colonialist state propaganda, and you're a bootlicker if you've ever watched it. We said all cops, cast the pup into the abyss. I didn't even want to come to Adventure City. I trusted you. You said everything would be fine. That guy. Me out here prostituting my personality on YouTube so Google can take half my money? Don't just fantasize about how cool it would be if you did make the art. Just do it. It's so much better. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Do you know that white supremacy and white nationalism is nowhere near, ranks nowhere near the top of the issues that are facing black America? Because the other night, the other night I was watching this movie, I was watching this movie called Fright Night, Freak Night, or some kind of night, but it was about vampires. I don't know if you know vampires are cool people, are they not? But I know that trans people make up words to win arguments. I'm Team Turf. I agree. Miles Morales is not Spider-Man. If he were Spider-Man, you wouldn't have to keep telling us. All right, guys, so we got to talk about Disney's woke Little Mermaid. Jewish people can't tell me who I can love and who I can't love. You can't say, you can't force your pain on everyone else. Jewish people, forgive Hitler today. You know, since we're talking about the whole LGBT thing, you said that nobody that's, I guess, sexually confused mm -hmm. is going to be allowed as a teacher in your school. Yes, that what is correct. What the fuck? Uh, brother, 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 how are you? Brother, man, man. Yeah. yeah. Brother, man, brother, bear, brother in Christ. Pardon me, watch your stare. Dari of eyes, sarcastic D, fucking with you niggas. Don't get a big head, no one putting up your big head. Um, okay. So. You saw the title of this video, and you pretty much know what this video is going to be about. But before we get into the bacon, lettuce, and tomato of everything, let's start this off right. Hi, I'm Think Peace Tribe, and you guys are the tribe that views my think pieces. Women, men, non-binary people, even colonizer culture vultures who are hewless hooligans and enemies of the sun, are welcome to watch the newest Think Peace Tribe video slash production. I'm the next up-and-coming black leftist YouTuber who's gonna get his fresh set of blue hair and pronouns when I book this nose piercing appointment tomorrow. And with this video, I'm gonna enter the free marketplace of ideas and give a thorough explanation slash critique about black conservatives. Who are they? What do they do? Are they harming the black community? Are they facing racism in conservative and liberal spaces? Is the critical race theory monster that conservatives manufactured going to stab me with wokeness like the spider monster from that limbo game? 
All those questions and more will be answered in this video with interviews from my big and be them women them and man them interjected all throughout this video because their opinions matter in the black conservatism conversation and they give experiences and talking points that are outside my cis heterosphere that need to be recognized and not left out of this conversation. Also, I recognize the optics of a black man critiquing black women, or in this case, the conservative black woman that I'll be critiquing throughout this video. I saw that patient in response video to Noah Sampson, and I will not be getting hit with the why are you as a man over critiquing a woman allegations. Like, y'all not gonna do me like that. I know your game. <laughs> I know what you are! <laughs> but seriously, let's start off this video with talking about what exactly black conservatism is. From Black Conservatism in America by Angela K. Lewis, by the way, shout out to Victory the Creator for sharing this with me. Defining black conservatism is difficult. The views of black conservatives are not monolithic, and any definition of black conservatism will face two limitations. That is, it will not be true of all black conservatives, and it may be true for many who are not black conservatives. Which is true because black conservatives don't only hold views that are specific to the black community. For example, Steven Crowder is anti-trans and Candace Owens is anti-trans. See, you don't have to be a black conservative to have these stupid viewpoints. But <laughs> moving on. Although it is difficult to define black conservatism, its basic tenets can be identified. First, black conservatives show great respect for Western civilization, its culture, and its institutions. Second, most black conservatives believe that through their own resources, blacks can succeed in American society. And three, black conservatives also believe that Western institutions provide all Americans with an equal chance for success. And this is something that I'm gonna get into later in this video, but I think that it's hilarious because these same Western institutions and systems burn down black towns, kill black activists, and treat black people as second-class citizens, all to keep white supremacy alive and well. You know, it's hard to have respect or even succeed in American society and capitalism in these Western institutions that provide all Americans with an equal chance for success when it keeps getting taken away or restricted to us. And then any criticism of the system will get you worked or vilified because look at what happened to Fred Hampton and look at how they used to play MLK Jr. on the TV and call him everything but a child of God. This video is slowly turning into black capitalism sucks and here's why. But we're talking about black conservatism here and the one thing about them is that they love capitalism. Got the whole shit boing boing in their mouths for it and everything. Shit is wild. But anyways, moving on. The origins of black conservatism does in fact date back to slave times, and it isn't a new phenomenon. Going back to the paper made by Angela Lewis. In the early 20th century, America evolved from conservative tradition, rooted in 18th century political thought. Shortly thereafter, black conservatives' political views became popular. It is difficult to trace the development of black conservatism to African culture, most black writers conclude that conservatism in the black community is largely a result of slavery and racism. Often referred to as the founding father of black conservatism, Jupiter Hammond was a Long Island slave and a literary figure. His literary work emphasized the importance of respectability, humility, morality, Christianity, and deference towards authority. Hmm, does this sound familiar? And to add much needed context, because Jupiter Hammond was born in 1711. During Hammond's time, black conservatives believed that free blacks had a responsibility to set examples for others by upholding high moral standards. This included proving themselves worthy of freedom by avoiding stealing and being lazy, as well as behaving in a manner to dispel myths about blacks being incapable of living a directed life. You see how some things never change? Like, this is literally identity and respectability politics. And when you put it into this context with black conservatives, who they are and what they're about starts to make a lot more sense. By the way, just want to mention that this type of thinking isn't something that only black conservatives have. Because I've heard many black liberals say these exact same things. But I had to read this part of the paper four times because I thought that I was taking it out of context. But no, he's honestly equating 
high moral standards to white people and whiteness. And when you look back, especially at the time that this was written, it's honestly a crazy thing to say. It's about how you're perceived. And I feel like there's a lot of um, sacrifice that is made for th these white people who like ultimately even when we're in the room with them do not see us as equals why should we ever like put any of our values against people who don't even see us as human i just it, it is mind-boggling and i feel like our generation is like more is kind of like man this is so dumb <laughs> and it's like we kind of like woke up and we're like y'all are serious like this is crazy and i feel like it's literally like drinking the kool-aid to survive because like in terms of the actual like physical um like resources at the end of the day it, it wasn't like a choice to be respectable or not it was either you say yes sir no sir or you get killed and so i get why the, like we were drinking the Kool-Aid, but it's a, we don't have to do it anymore. We can stop, it's enough. And it's really embarrassing because why should we suck up to our oppressors in the perfect cis heteronormative Christian lives to be deemed as worthy in American society or anywhere outside of America? Like yeah, I'm a cis hetero man, but not every black person is gonna be that. Not every black person is gonna be a Christian or cis or heterosexual. Also, you can live a perfect cis heteronormative Christian life and still get pulled over, harassed, and possibly killed by the police. You can live a perfect cis heteronormative Christian life and still face anti-blackness and racism by white people and non-black people. Because at the end of the day, you're still black and I'm still black. So all I'm saying is to live up to these moral standards created by white supremacy and applying it to black people is dumb. Because why should we be caring about what our oppressors have to think or say about us? If they thought that we could live directed lives and were worthy of freedom, then they wouldn't have enslaved us for hundreds of years and treat us as replaceable commodities that were made to be slaves for white people. This viewpoint of trying to become as worthy of freedom as possible to the same people that took away our freedom in the first place is wild when you say it out loud, but it puts the black conservative viewpoint in a perspective. Being white, man. Like for, I, I, I mean, that's probably not, that's probably not fair. Um, but part of it is that when I think about it, cause like there's money, there's definitely money in it. I feel like most of them probably wouldn't do this shit if it wasn't for money. But then, you know, you come across the nigga that like actually believes that this shit you, know, you come across like a Thomas Sowell or like a Clarence Thomas and them dudes like actually believe that shit so that's when I say like trying to be white like those are the kind of dudes that I know sat across from a table with someone like um the fuck is that turtle's name Mitch McConnell and plotted the downfall of black people and then carried carried that shit out so I think I don't think there's one like specific motivation but I think part of it's money, part of it's power, and then part of it's like, they may not even realize it, but like, part of it, some of these niggas just really just don't want to be black. I have this saying where I be saying, um, it comes to the subject of a lot of black men. A lot of black men want to be equal to white men and not everyone. They want to have the, when I say that, that means they want to be able to get away with the same things that white men get away with like the bad shit they do. So that is where I always begin when I just go to the down the like black conservative pipeline. It always starts off, off with like a lot of black people, not just black men, but a lot of black people in general because I have seen this happen with um, black women too just as well. A lot of them, they don't care about the rights of everyone and everybody else in the world. They just care about the rights for them. And when it comes to the rights for them, they just want to be equal as white people. And that's not even saying, oh, they want to be equal as white people. That's simply because they want to be able to do the same shit that white people do and get away with it. Because I noticed that when it comes to this discussion, the entire capitalism um, aspect comes into play. Where you know how like a lot of successful businesses out here are 
you know, owned by white people. And a lot of black people be like, I want to own a successful business, this and then the third. And I'm like, what actually is a successful business? And I'm a black business owner, so I feel like I can critique this. But the reason why so many black businesses, like, not black businesses, white businesses are able to, you know, get that big is because they exploit their workers. And that is something that a lot of black people like they want to be able to do things that white people do and get away with it and then they get upset when you know black people critique them and i'm like hey i support you because you're a black business owner black entrepreneur but if you're trying to exploit your workers like the white people that just kind of defeats the purpose and that's not right because as i am a black business owner i mainly kind of do everything myself and then i do ask for help here and there but i don't necessarily exploit my workers and then the people that i do have you know by working for me and making my things and stuff like that in other countries or whatnot. Um, very respectful to them, very nice to them. I don't try to undercut them or anything. Like I pay them what they tell me. Um, sometimes like if it comes to like negotiating or things like that, I'll be like, hey, I can't pay the full price right now, but on this day at this time, I will have that and give it to you. Like it's just stuff like that that like so many black people want to be able to get away with because white people are able to get away with that shit. So that's just kind of how I feel about the entire black conservative pipeline. They just want to be able to get away with white fuckery. Uh I think there's in like the camp of black conservatism there's a lot of black cis men and black cis women who on the side of black cis men are like one category away from um participating in white supremacy like they're they have one foot in the door of patriarchy and there's some benefit there um and so i feel like there's still almost like an aspirational aspect of being a black conservative um as a black cis man because of their proximity or their closeness to white patriarchy and then for black cis women i feel like because there's already like a um a contention with gender when it comes to black women and how they're portrayed in media and treated like in communities especially in like this particular trend of transphobia within conservatism um there's like a, um a chance for black cis women to kind of participate in determining who gets to be a woman and who gets to um, define womanhood. And I feel like for both of those ends, there's like a power trip that's happening um, that is at the heart of the Black conservatives, uh, conservatism, the desire to have power and authority and um, to be seen and heard in like this space that is very um, exclusive and prides itself on its exclusivity. Black conservatism is thinking that working with white people and assimilating the whiteness so that they can be deemed as worthy by white people is the way to advance the black community and to achieve success. Black conservatism is upholding white supremacy and capitalism because these systems supposedly treat everyone equally and gives black people an equal opportunity for success. Black conservatism is showing the utmost respect for these corrupt and racist systems because it's one of the only ways that they know how to achieve equality and to be seen as more than a race. But do you see the contradiction in these statements? Working with the same people that put you down constantly, becoming worthy of freedom to the same people that took that freedom away from you in the first place. Yeah, this is ultimately the confusing nature of black conservatives, because how are we supposed to succeed or achieve greatness in these same systems that were built to be against us in every way possible? It's the ultimate conundrum within the black community. And some of the more well-known black conservatives that you know of, like Candace Owens, Kanye West, Thomas Sowell, and Herschel Walker, will be getting brought up in this video. I won't be name dropping every black conservative to ever exist, because then this video will end up being five or more hours long, and my view retention rate is three to four minutes long. So you can do the math and see where the problem lies with that. But anyways, 
let's move on to the next part of this video with part uh why the lights turn off <sighs> i know i didn't get that many views on my last video but i still pay my rent man what's going on what am i doing here ah who are you hey thing peace tribe i'm like a lucky junior never nation and I heard that you're making a video essay about black conservatives. I mean, yeah, but did you kidnap me or something? Like, how did I teleport downstairs so fast? See, this is what's wrong with this generation. You rather make it in the video essays instead of praising a white man for everything he's done for us. Mm, 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 mm. You niggas disappoint me every day. Every day, I tell you. <sighs> okay, so did you bring me down here to make fun of me or what? Nah, usually I would call you a good for nothing jive and monkey and move on. But you said some incorrect things about black conservatism that I need to debunk before you move on to the next part of this video. Uh, okay. First off, we don't try to assimilate the whiteness because we already are white. You know of my re vitiligo condition. Second off, you say that capitalism sucks, but what other nigga ideology do you support? Don't tell me it's not socialism or communism crap. See, this is exactly why J. Edgar Hoover started Con Intel Pro, because of monkeys like you, and I pray to white Jesus that it'll happen again to keep niggas like you in check. Yeah, okay, I think that it's hilarious how you never answered my question. You, you literally never responded to my question of how we're supposed to become worthy of freedom to the same people that put us in this position in the first place. And like, literally, why would we do that? These are the same people that put us in chains. You think they're gonna deem us worthy of freedom? See, Think Peace, you got it all wrong. You see, we were made to serve the white man because black people can't amount to nothing except rappers and basketball players. And the white man knew that, so he put us in our place early on before we could get on to that point. Jesus Christ. You see, people like you are so lost. You believe that racism is real and capitalism is what's really harming the black community, but in reality, we are what's harming the black community because the white man tried to give us food, shelter, and what did we do with it? We spat in the face of the white man and look where it's gotten us now. Oh, I pray to white Jesus and hope someday that we can go back to those times. Uh, yeah. That's interesting. But is that all? Cause I gotta get back to this video if you don't mind. Wait a minute, hold up, hold up. You know what I hate more than niggas like you? <sighs> what, well, Uncle Rogers Jr.? What do you hate more than people like me? I hate those black conservatives that are only in it for the money. I mean, I just hope that Ronald Reagan would strike them down from heaven for their nonsense. They're faker than black people claiming that they're being oppressed by the white man. Actually, that's funny because it's what I'm gonna talk about in the next part of this video. With part two. Uh, uh, okay, um, that was weird. Anyways, let's move on to my next talking point. But first, let me get some backstory. This video was originally just gonna be about the black conservative grift and getting into the ins and outs of it all before I realized that there's more to examine about black conservatives than the ones that are only in it for the money. And when I was making a draft for that video, I found the perfect way to explain what the black conservative grift is through that one girl who faked being a black Trump supporter on Twitter. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me explain. So to sum up the story, on October 27, 2018, Chick Peas made a tweet that she was coming out as a conservative, where she said, I will not hide any longer. The left has made us feel as if us black Republicans should hide, but not anymore. Hmm. Does this sound familiar? Anyways, after that she tweeted, thank you all so much for your overwhelming support. After seeing this tweet, my parents cut me off and refused to pay my university tuition. So if you can find it in your hearts to help this young black Republican pay for school, it would be appreciated. And link the GoFundMe fundraiser under it. She even faked messages between her and her mom to really get across that this was a genuine situation and that it wasn't fake. And people really believed her, cause if you look down the thread you'll see tweets like, you go girl, red looks great on you, and God will help you. Part of leaving the plantation is not getting handouts, it's called pride. Like leaving the plantation uh what do you mean by that but if you know about the story then you know how she made it all up and supposedly raised over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars from conservative donors with that gofundme she made 
when she was out of her at all, she said that it wasn't stealing because Republicans are people to begin with. <laughs> Which is one of the funniest things I've ever heard. Dave Chappelle could be this funny, but he's too busy being transphobic and inviting Elon Musk to his shows to get booed. <laughs> Anyways, this situation doesn't get brought up in a lot of videos about the conservative grift, and that's honestly crazy to me because it is a perfect example of what the black conservative grift is and what it looks like. Embracing white supremacist slash racist rhetoric and removing yourself from the culture because you see that money can be made in these conservative spaces. It's a grift through the means of white supremacy, being a con artist through the means of racism, a swindler, scammer, huckster, hustler, or charlatan through the means of homophobia, transphobia, anti-semitism, and anti-blackness. Except in this scenario, Chickpeas is doing this ironically, and because of that, we have no choice but to stand. In the case of people like Candace Owens, for example, she's doing this unironically. And because of that, me and my 1,228 Twitter followers are gonna have to cancel you. And to expand on this point further, Shonda Black made a video about this already, but Candace is probably the best well-known example of the black conservative grift. I mean, this is the same lady that experienced multiple hate crimes against her and knows what it's like to face oppression by being black in America. So how do you know what it's like to face racism because of white supremacy and turn around and say that white supremacy is nowhere near one of the issues that's affecting black people? How do you go from asking the NAACP for help when you were getting hate crime by white people and turn around and say that the NAACP doesn't help black people? Well, it's easy. You just become a grifter. You totally remove yourself from the culture and embrace white supremacist values, anti-LGBTQ values, and even fascist values for profit. I mean, look at the boost she's gotten on her social media profiles ever since she came out as a conservative and is now considered to be one of the most well-known black conservatives in America. She knows what she's doing because she knows what oppression looks like. She literally experienced it multiple times. Candace and other people like her create manufactured outrage where they make up that white people are being oppressed for being white. They create manufactured outrage on trending topics in media that they don't really care about and even say stuff like socialism is what led to slavery even though capitalism and slavery are more locked in than the Lil Baby and Gunna song. And they're saying these idiotic things all for money and views. This same thing is what people like Pace and Zena do when it comes to creating manufactured outrage on trending topics in media that they don't really care about. Like something isn't right here. Cause how do you go from just making music to becoming an apolitical YouTuber who talks about how Ariel getting race swapped is bad? It's just so funny because it's obviously ripped. I mean again, look at the boost that she's gotten ever since she started making this conservative type of content. And I know what the counter response is gonna be to what I just said. You're just calling anyone who doesn't agree with your political viewpoints a conservative grifter. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that purposely avoiding talking about the racism in this aerial race swap and discourse creates this manufactured outrage that fuels this forced diversity in media talk that in turn enables white supremacist rhetoric. And let me explain. Cause you're acting like the original 1989 The Little Mermaid animated film is getting deleted for this new live action version. Which is weird, like why are you purposely leaving out a lot of context about this specific situation that conservatives love to point at and go, see, the media really is oppressing white people through race swapping. I just can't take this seriously because there's so many other things that you can attack Disney for. Like for example, how Disney keeps making these black movies, but the black main characters in them keep turning into animals or these otherworldly beings for a majority of the movie. But instead of going after that or anything else that Disney has done with their black characters, you decide to talk about, <laughs> I kid you not, redhead erasure. And what's funny about that, as Princess Wiki stated in her video about The Little Mermaid and the myth of nuance. To reiterate, Ariel in this adaptation of The Little Mermaid with Halle Bailey has red hair and is a black mermaid. So if you want redhead representation, you have it. Unless you don't want a black redhead mermaid, which is what a lot of people genuinely feel. And pretending otherwise just quite frankly ignores the last 15 years of race bending on television and film since Bonnie on the Vampire Diaries at least because the original Bonnie in the books was a white redhead character and ever since she has been getting hate and 
you know, really egregious things said to her. Same with Candace Patton. This is not valid. It is not valid to completely racially harass actors for playing a character that originally was a redhead and trying to pretend as though that's the issue that you have especially be in the same show in which elena is supposed to be a blonde because she's an icy blonde and they made her a brunette because well obviously we kind of know it to make it look more like twilighty but that's the issue is like you cannot pretend that in response to losing one redhead character out of so many that exist that it validates the harassment that black creators and black actors are facing and that's also not what gets attention from people in terms of how we discuss it in social media we keep doing these false equivalencies to continue the pretense that we are working from the same place when it comes from media representation and i find it particularly frustrating because it flattens all the arguments in order to be like these two things are the same even though they are not oh she's spitting Oh, she's spitting, y'all. Hold on. Hold on. Let her cook. Let her cook. I'm going to play one more clip from this video because she was absolutely spitting in this one. Hold on. Let her cook. Let her cook. Okay, B, so you take Tiana, the only Disney black princess. We take Ariel, one of your sacred redhead princesses. You still have two. You still have Merida and Anna. You still have more white princesses and we still only have one black Disney princess. Like, you know, we need to start taking Belle. I mean, I'll take Aurora too. I like I like the idea of having like a very soft queen out here. Um, for anything to even remotely be equal. Like this one success, because we again we haven't seen the movie yet, we don't know if it's gonna be good. This one success is not removing anything from you. It is adding one thing for us. And if you see the removal of Ariel, not as being a redhead, but as being a white person, as as paramount to you losing something actively in media, then I think it's a bigger conversation of how you define your whiteness versus if this diversity is a bad thing. And then you talk about how race swapping is bad because we need to be making more black original characters. But what's funny about that is even when we do make more black original characters, people call it woke and pandering to a minority. And when a character's race is irrelevant to their story and the original character gets a different version of said character that's black, guess what? People still call it woke and pandering to a minority. Like, genuinely, there's no winning here. We've continuously seen this with the Miles Morales in Spider-Man argument, even though the entire point of the Spider-Man character is that anyone can wear the mask. One of the literal creators of Spider-Man, Stan Lee, rest in peace, has come out and said this multiple times. You could be black, you could be Asian, you right. could be Indian, you right. could be anything and imagine you were in that costume. Right. So I think that made it relevant to everybody everywhere. Right. And that was accidental. I mean, I, right. I don't think we planned it that way, but right. it was very fortuitous. Plus, I keep hearing the argument that if he was Spider-Man, then why do y'all keep having to say it? And it's like, how are y'all like this? You don't get to keep saying dumb shit. And then when we invalidate act as if you aren't the reason it's being repeatedly invalidated in the first place. We're saying that because evidently we have to because of people like you. And while we're talking about Spider-Man, it's also happened with Spider-Woman. Cause you got niggas complaining about Spider-Woman being race swapped in the new Across the Spider-Verse movie that's coming out, even though the original Spider-Woman is a black woman! Like I said before, th there, is, th there is genuinely no winning here. Also, this same thing happened when it came out that Sarah was going to be black in that The Last of Us live action show. And this same point came up about how it's woke and pandering to a minority, even though the character's race is irrelevant to the story because she literally dies in the first few minutes of the game. And she'll probably die in the first 20 minutes of the show. So it genuinely doesn't matter because Sarah is only used as a plot device for Joe's character arc 20 years later when he meets Ellie. And Sarah being white had nothing to do with that. Also, I said that this same thing happened with this The Last of Us live action show because the original version of the character still exists 
in the original PS3 game, the remastered PS4 game, and the PS5 game remake version. Just like how the original 1989 Little Mermaid animated film still exists on every streaming service and still gets regularly played on TV. Like, nothing's getting swapped or replaced here. It's just different versions of these characters, and the original versions will still be available to watch. Let me tell you, a lot of these lack of services don't care about the shit they're talking about. They do not care because I'm telling you, you've seen my work and you see that like I talk a lot about animation and specifically like Disney animation and this and that and the third. So you'll see my work and then you'll see someone like Princess Weeks. You'll see her work and you'll see she's very like interested in animation and all of that jazz. And then even FD Signifier, because you know, he got kids, so he's educated on these things too. It's like when you hear these takes from people like this, they're very much more nuanced, and we all can agree on the fact that, um, yes, we do need more original, you know, black stories. And this is coming from people that check out original black stories too. But we can confirm that y'all do not look at this shit. Y'all don't look at it, y'all don't care about it. So the only way to get y'all to care is if we take a character whose race had nothing to do with the storyline and change it because we know that you're gonna look at this property because you're a fan of it. Because what pisses me off so bad was the entire thing with Percy Jackson. I feel like they changed Annabeth's character to black for the better because the way she can speak to people sometimes, especially non-black people in these works, it can come off a bit as racist. And I didn't really like that feel when I would be like reading the Percy Jackson series and seeing all this and then the third, because it could be read that Annabeth could be a little racist because of the way she just treats like a lot of the non-black characters. So I think it was a good thing that they changed her to black, but also Rick Riordan himself, the creator of Percy Jackson, he made that creative decision that he wanted to change her to black simply because Leah, the girl who is playing uh, her, is good for that role. You had people who never gave a flying fuck about Percy Jackson talking about race swapping and this and that and the third. Why are y'all constantly inserting yourselves in conversations where you know you don't go? You don't go here, baby. Especially the entire thing, The Little Mermaid. I was like, I scroll through a lot of you guys' work. I see what y'all talk about. I see this and that and the third. Since when do you care about animation? Tell me. Tell me, since when do you care? Since when? Since when do you go here? Stay in your lane, boo. Like, if you gonna talk about this and that and the third, go talk about that over there. But it's so obvious that you're putting your opinions here about something that you don't care about because you know people are going to click on it because people see that as the hot topic. Like I said, they just simply do things for attention. They don't do them because they simply care about it. Cause I'm like, if I'm talking about issues relating to race, and gender and all that relating to animation, but everybody knows animation is like my circle. I go there. Y'all fuckers do not care about this. Why are you over here? But yeah, I'll leave it at that. This manufactured outrage for profit is seen in more black conservative grifters like the Haas twins, who, if you didn't know, moved from being fitness YouTubers who were more known for their overall toxicity that never draw into politics to creating a channel called The Conservative Twins where they quite obviously grift for conservative clicks, likes, and subscribers. It's also been seen in discourse surrounding critical race theory, for example. And, oh wait, as I'm looking at this Noah Simpson video, look at this guy who went viral for debunking why critical race theory shouldn't be taught in K-12 schools, even though it's not and has never been taught in K-12 schools. I wish I got taught about critical race theory in high school instead of getting taught the standard whitewashed version of MLK Jr. and Malcolm X's history for one month out of the entire school year that pretty much consisted of MLK Jr. was a peaceful capitalist who had a dream and Malcolm X was a violent man. And, oh wait, that dude I was talking about earlier, he's Candace Owens' big brother, he doesn't have two medical degrees, and all of this is a grip because he went to this Illinois school board meeting to boost his conservative social media following and presence by creating manufactured outrage about a trending topic in media that he has no knowledge of and doesn't care about?
Why am I not surprised? Well, because I know that when white conservatives create manufactured outrage like this, it's to always keep the place in society and oppress others that they deem as beneath them most of the time. Because I am not knocking the white conservative grip that exists. Woke M&Ms have returned. The green M&M got her boots back, but apparently is now a lesbian, maybe. And there's also a plus-sized, obese, purple M&M. So we're going to cover that, of course. Because that's what we do. Also, this grift exists in the manosphere, which is overtly conservative and misogynistic. Especially the black manosphere, with people like Kevin Samuels that were very, very conservative and misogynistic. But more on that later. When black conservatives create manufactured outrage like this, it's because they want to make money off of it, or because they genuinely believe in the outrage that they created and is all made up in their imaginations. And see, this is exactly why I expanded this video to the confusing nature of black conservatives instead of talking about the black conservative grift. Because how could I forget about people like Thomas Sowell, Herschel Walker, and Kanye West? How could I forget about people like him? Yeah, how could you forget about people like me? The real black folks who know that their place in this world is to serve the white man and the white man only. Yeah, how could I forget about people like you? The house negro. The people who love white people more than white people love themselves. Oh, don't compliment me too much. You know I try to lift the boots of white people as much as possible. Well, I can't leave you out of the black conservative conversation because you guys make yourselves really known that you are genuine black conservatives. You are loud and proud about that and you're definitely not faking your love and outrage for profit. Oh, you're too kind, Pink Peace Tribe. You're too kind. Well, I suppose I should let you get back to your video now. Yes, you should. Because before I was rudely interrupted, I was gonna get into the absolute coonery that you guys engage in with part three. <sighs> I've just accepted that this is gonna keep happening throughout this video, so let's move on by talking about the genuine Uncle Tom's before I get rudely interrupted again. So you pretty much know the type of people that I'm gonna be talking about here. You've seen them in real life, you've seen them in cartoons, you've even seen them in this video, unfortunately. And while there's a lot to be said about them, I really wanna dissect why they are the way that they are. And how does a black person get to this sad point in life? How do they become pygmies and tokens? Like I said before, black conservatism is interconnected with the transatlantic slave trade because that's where it originated from. With this in mind, you know how they are willing to fully remove themselves from the culture to embrace white supremacy to the fullest for their benefit. Lil Bill made a great video about this where he dissects the origins of the house negro and gets into how they become these ultimate contrarians because for one, it was the better choice for the conditions that they were put in because when you look at it from their mindset, being a house slave was better than becoming a field slave. And I mean, think about it. If you had a choice between six days a week of back-breaking labor for a tar paper shack and a bucket of hog malls, or getting your titty sucked for a chicken wing and an actual bed to sleep in, which would you prefer? However, this had the added effect of black conservatism starting in the black community, and has led to many different subsections of it throughout the black community and black households. Going back to Lil Bill's video, he made a literal tier list of these subsections that stem from black conservatism through slavery, and that last one is hilarious because we're going to get into that later, but pretty much this is why I couldn't leave them out of this video, because yeah, these types of black conservatives aren't only in these spaces for the money. They purposely embrace white supremacy and respectability politics to the fullest, because they think that it's the best way to advance the black community because in their minds it's what helped them the most so because of that they think that all black people should be doing what they're doing this is where this stop being a victim mentality comes from with black conservatives and why they harp on it so much and it's why they hate welfare programs set up to support black people and other programs like affirmative action even though white women benefit the most from affirmative action and if they ever learn about this watch other stop trashing affirmative action in a heartbeat we're not a monolith what? in fact black republicans alone are an extremely diverse group of people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. excuse me gentlemen uh sorry to interrupt Someone's white wife is here to pick them up? And it's why they say things like, we need to get over slavery, and we need to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps if we ever want to become successful, which is their response to black people supposedly claiming a victim mentality. But here's the thing, you see how a lot of context is being left out of these statements? 
We need to get over slavery when white people have never gotten over slavery and have continued to systematically oppress us through Jim Crow, redlining, the war on drugs, the loophole in the 13th Amendment which allows slavery to continue through the prison industrial complex, etc. We need to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps if we ever want to become successful when we have. And when we've done this exact thing or try to do it, our towns get burned to the ground, our leaders get killed by the government, our communities get removed through economic development and justification, or we can't access the resources needed to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps because white people systemically make it so we can't do that. But even after you show them all this evidence and all the systemic oppression that black people faced back then and how that has continued to affect black people to this day, they will still pull the stop being a victim argument and their viewpoint never changes because like I said before, removing themselves from the culture and embracing white supremacy work for them in their heads, so they think that all black people should be doing what they're doing. I swear to god, it's like you're talking to a brick wall, and there's more than one reason for that. Cause you can't forget how them removing themselves from the culture to embrace white supremacy has the added effect of them trying to assimilate to whiteness because they want the power, privilege, acceptance, and status that comes with being white. This applies to black conservatives who are rich as well, because they think that the world sees them as more than a race, that they don't see color. But historically, and currently, the world only sees them for their race, and they see color all the time. Because at the end of the day, whether they like it or not, they are still black and still have to face all the negative associations and racism that comes with being black. And this is how white conservatives use them as tokens. For example, look at how many white conservatives will respond to anything about racism with that one Morgan Freeman quote. How are we gonna get rid of racism and Stop talking about it. I'm gonna stop calling you a white man. Yeah. And I'm gonna ask you to stop calling me a black man. I know you as Mike Wallace, you know me as Morgan Freeman. Which is just insane because not talking about racism isn't magically gonna make racism go away. That's not how this shit works. Racism is a system and that system will continue to spread if you don't talk about it, acknowledge it, and educate people about it. Also, saying that people should not talk about racism means that people shouldn't educate other people about racism, which actually fuels white supremacy and racism more because it hides it, and those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it. If people don't learn about the history of racism in the world, then people will keep on repeating the same racism because they can't acknowledge what racism is because they are uneducated about it. If people don't learn about these institutional systems put in place to oppress people, then people will keep on repeating them because they can't acknowledge why these systems are put into place in the first place because they are uneducated about them. And it's so annoying because Morgan Freeman saying that ignorant crap leaves out a lot of context, which is what black conservatives do when they make their statements on how to fix the black community. Like we've done all the things. We engaged in respectability politics and never had the victim mentality because we have always tried to make something out of nothing. I mean, you're talking about the same people who had to make a whole new identity and culture for ourselves because our original African identities got stripped away due to the transatlantic slave trade. We've poured ourselves up by our bootstraps, but it's never worked because our efforts always get suppressed. We had a whole black Wall Street in Tulsa that was the epitome of every stop being a victim, pull yourselves up by your bootstraps mentality that black conservatives talk about. But guess what? That shit got burned to the ground and destroyed. We have done everything you said to do to advance the black community, but our efforts constantly keep getting put down. I'm noticing a trend here with black conservatives. They say some dumb shit that leaves out a lot of context. We respond to their arguments with said context. They keep going back to the same arguments even with all the evidence that we provided that makes their claims wrong and say even dumber shit in response and the cycle starts over and over and over again. And as you can tell, it is really fucking irritating. I'm so sick of these people, you know, 
Oh! But we have to also take in how their upbringing, environment, and other factors led them to have this hard-headed way of thinking, even if all the evidence proves them wrong. And we also have to recognize that there's a difference between black men becoming conservatives and black women becoming conservatives. And the same thing applies to queer black people becoming conservatives as well. I mean, it's gotta be. Because those are two different experiences. You know, being a black man and being a black woman you know, you have blackness in common, but those are two different experiences. You know, why black men do things isn't necessarily the same reason why white or why uh, black women do things, because you know we have two different realities. In the same in the same breath that you know black women do things, black trans people do things for specific reasons. You know, the 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 realities that we all live in are different. Um, when I look at like Candace Owens or like. Um, what the fuck are they? Uh, like diamond and silk. They don't look the same to me as Thomas Sowell or Clarence Thomas. Um, they look similar to somebody like like the hot like these goofy niggas I got in my background. <laughs> like they look similar to the Hodge twins. But when I think about black women who were doing conservative grift, the only person that comes to mind that had any sort of power was like Condoleezza Rice. Everybody else that that is doing the black conservative, whatever the fuck they're doing, is male, is a man, and has power. Not everybody else, that's not fair, but, you know, Clarence Thomas sits on the Supreme Court, like, that nigga got power. You know, um, Colin Powell was Secretary of Defense, like, that nigga had power, like, he was doing shit, and literally fucking killing motherfuckers, but, um, you know, black women with the exception of like Condoleezza Rice, I really don't see having like substantial social power. So I don't know, I think that's like, if I had to point to a difference, that's probably the biggest difference that I see. Like genuinely the black community and black households can be really conservative through their colorist, anti-black and anti-LGBTQ ways of thinking. And let me explain. I started to think about this point more when I realized that some black conservatives and divestors find themselves in these conservative echo chambers because they're lost. And one might become this way because of how they were raised in a black household. For example, look at Anthony Edwards and how he legit went out of his way to record a group of gay men and said, Look at these <laughs> queer ass niggas, man. <laughs> Do the world I came to, bro. Like, I'm not gonna lie, when he said that, I swear to God, I've heard these exact same words being uttered by black kids at my all black high school, black kids at my HBCU, and black adults at church or at the Thanksgiving dinner table. When I thought more about it, I realized that most times you'll hear black people say more conservative shit than some white supremacists because they're a product of their environment. And when that environment is fueled with anti-LGBTQ ways of thinking, people like Anthony Edwards are a result of that. It's indicative of a problem within the black community that we don't like to talk about because how could we possibly be conservative in any way, shape, or form? But just like how nobody is born prejudiced, Nobody is born a conservative and has these conservative ways of thinking out the womb. These conservative ways of thinking are taught in the black community and black households through colorism, anti-blackness, misogyny, anti-LGBTQ rhetoric, and this is one of the ways that black people get lost in these conservative echo chambers, because whether you believe it or not, they most likely grew up conservative. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I, I can speak from my experience. Um, I come from like a hyper Christian African household, um, grew up going to church every Sunday and grew up um, listening to my mom disparage black Americans like really very often, like um, casually. I feel like I can speak from like a, a, an immigrant like household perspective the like myth of the racial minority or the model minority is like s is the scam of the century that a lot of my like aunts uncles and my mom has like bought into like the idea that if you say the right things if you go to the right colleges um if you make enough money that white people will not treat you badly um and it's not true um and so i feel like again it's like i was reading um 
uh, Octavia Butler's Parable of the Sower. And in it, it um, she talks about how the adults in this story were convinced that one day things would go back to normal or one day if we just keep our heads down and do what needs to be done that these people will treat us like human beings or one day so on and so forth and i feel like in order to keep sane my parents had to convince themselves that there was some kind of it was a means to an end that going that getting up every morning to go to work and deal with microaggressions and and it's just it's just the the price you pay for the american dream and there is no recognition that the american they never achieved this american dream that they they keep kind of using as the reason they believe in these things and so i feel like for a lot of immigrants who move to the u.s there's this belief that if you can make it here you can make it anywhere that working hard is enough and for my parents that was true like they worked hard and they made money and they have family uh like a really strong family unit that is supportive in the united states and so because there are lawyers and doctors and nurses in our family, they're using those as like justification and not realizing that a lot of the children in our family are developing really intense like social anxieties and mental illnesses because of this myth that if you are perfect, that nothing will ever happen to you. And then things still do happen to us, even as we um, follow these rules that they've set up. So I'll say that like, in instead of the black family being conservative, I think it might be more of a generational um, issue that is starting to kind of um, uh, weed itself out of newer generations because the African um, like the second generation African um, youths that I talk to we're having conversations about how going to call like we don't know if we actually do want to go to college or um, how perfection has been crippling for us in our like early 20s when we finally fail a test for the first time and how like detrimental that has been into our our sense of self and our our worth mm -hmm. and i feel like having those discussions with each other is an opportunity to develop language to have those discussions with our parents and now as like a 24 year old black person in the u.s who is very kind of read in in a lot of the ways that all of these things are fake i'm able to have conversations with my mom in like a confident way and i don't think for from my perspective i don't think the older generation is unreasonable it's just that they've kind of had to drink the kool-aid to not go insane to not like go crazy hmm. okay let me tell you, college, let me tell you, college, because you know how in college you be away from your family. A lot of my college classmates be putting their family on blast. They be like, my daddy a full of Republican, and I never agree with his views and all of that. A lot of black households, like a lot of black people's parents and like uncles and aunties and whatnot, they they kind of feed into like that Uncle Tom, Uncle Ruckus narrative because they want to be accepted by white people because that's where they that's where they know the money is. A lot of black households can like you know very be very much conservative because you'll have one black household over here that is very much progressive on the subject of you know race but they'll be homophobic and transphobic as hell because that's oh, that is one issue within the black community that we got to do better on and i am thankful that i live in a household it, 
that where, you know, we are accepting and loving of everybody regardless of their sexuality, gender, and race. But a lot of Black people were not raised like that. A lot of Black people are raised to be homophobic and transphobic. A lot of Black people are raised to be ableist. Like, a lot of Black people are raised to be anti-Semitic. A lot of this shit be starting in the household, but mm-hmm. you, it is up to you to break that cycle. And sometimes you're not gonna be able to break that cycle until you get away from your household. Like so many people have like a shift in their views when they go off to college because they're finally away from their hometowns. They're finally out of their households and they're finally around other black kids that think differently than them and they challenge them and whatnot because a lot of people have opened up about I know Terry for sure was telling me about it how a lot of his views on things in the world changed when he went to college because he was finally around black people that actually thought differently it's just it's just a lot of it starts at home and like I said the black community we have a lot to do when it comes to you know doing better because fat phobia is a big thing too within the, <laughs> the black, black community yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. But fat phobia is a bad problem within the black community just as well. And a lot of people, I'm telling you, like, somebody has said something about how some of y'all be sounding like white people depending on what we're talking about. Because when you bring up anything about, like, fat phobia and not being mean to people because of their size and whatever, so many black people be sounding so nasty. They be sounding so rude. And I'm just like, ooh, I don't want to sit by y'all. I don't want to sit by y'all. It's like, mm mm. Get, let me get out of here. It's just a lot of it just starts at home. And while we are a bit thankful that, like, and also there's a lot of colorism that people grow up with at home because a lot of black people do have light skinned parents that say negative shit about dark skinned people, or some people have dark skinned daddies that say negative shit about um, dark skinned women. My, my, my grandma, um, my grandma was dark skinned. My daddy is dark skinned. And I really do feel like the way a lot of my family members look and how they are, because I do have gay family members too, just as well. I feel like that is part of the reason why I was able to grow up in such like a loving environment. And I have like a lot of like, you know, fat people in the family too, just as well. Mm-hmm. I feel like because I was around so many different kinds of black people in my life, that is why I, because I, I still have problems. I'm, I'm not saying my views were always great when I was a kid because no, 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 no. I feel like that really contributed to why I am the way I am now because while I can say, I'm not gonna say I was perfect. I didn't grow up in a perfect household or anything like that and my family's not perfect. I feel like why I wasn't able, I didn't fall down that like black conservative pipeline because this is what I was surrounded with. I was like, I have never heard my daddy say anything colorist about, you know, black women. And like my mama wasn't dark skinned, but my dad, his sisters are dark skinned. His mama is dark skinned, all his aunties are dark skinned. My mama has dark skinned aunties and cousins and all of that. And never heard them say a negative thing about dark skinned people. And I do feel like that contributed to why I did not grow up colorist like a lot of black people do. A lot of people don't seem to realize they pick up a lot of their habits from their parents. Like, so many, so many of like the things they say, their dialect, their speech, in this and in the third, it comes from your parents. But it's up to you at a certain point in your life where you realize, hey, this behavior isn't okay, and I need to break that cycle. A lot of black people just are afraid of breaking that cycle because community is something that is very strange here. People are afraid of cutting off their horrible ass family members or challenging them because they want to keep that sense of community. But I'm like, is that kind of community that you want to keep? Well, what you mean by conservative? And in that, and probably should have asked this earlier, but when you say that, I start thinking about um, Feek. When he talks about little C conservative and, and, and big C conservative. So you mean like conservative and like. I don't know, like electoral politics sense, right? Yeah, like like it's like conservative in how they um, teach their kids colorist ways of thinking, anti-black ways of thinking, mm-hmm. anti-LGBTQ rhetoric. Because I, I actually like just just like kind of wrote this part for the video, but you look at someone like Anthony Edwards, for example. I don't know. If, I don't know if you know about that situation. Do you? No, nah, I'm not good at it. Um, it, it was a situation where he went out of his way. To a, to a um, court a group of gay men and he was like look at these queers man look at where the world has come to 
right? Get the fuck out my face. And man. then it's Whatever. like, but but, the, but then when I really thought about it, I was like, hold on. I've heard this exact same shit from some of the black kids in my all black high school, mm, mm, from mm. some black kids in my at my own HBCU. So there's got to be a connection here. There has to be there has to be something here. Why 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 did that sound familiar? It's a couple of reasons for me if I'm thinking about it. Cause there's there's like a hotep reason, and then there's a we live in a right white supremacist like society reason. You know what I mean? For the whole taps, it's like, you know, they do that whole like buck breaking shit that they got in their heads, you know what I mean? Like, oh, you know, they did all this shit to black men, so then, you know, they go hard against, you know, being queer and shit like that, you know what I mean? And then there's, which I think is a a, a small part of like why it happens. Like, I don't think that's the biggest issue. I think that's like a very small like subsect. But the other part, which I mean, these two things aren't really all that, disconnected but the other one is just living in a white supremacist society which includes you know queer hatred basically like that's not that's that's a feature of of, of, of white supremacy so um how do you how, how they come about is like you know especially when it comes to stuff like uh like the church you know church is a big fucking thing for black folks and i feel like a lot of like white supremacist beliefs like weasel their way in through the church because that wasn't something that we brought here on our own you know we could talk about like ethiopia and christianity and all that but we for the most part didn't bring christianity here we were given christianity when we got here well i say when we got here we were given christianity after we were stolen kidnapped and then brought here um and i think a lot of that white supremacist shit seeped in through that um i don't know i don't know if i can say that's all of it but i don't know maybe most or uh, at, at minimum like a, a a significant part of it but like it's real easy to see how you could because like i did it right when i was a kid i had the same shit in my head you know even though you know, i had my own like internal internal shit i was dealing with um you get you just get taught that because that's how it is like i don't know whatever I'll, 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 I'll date myself a little bit but you know being around in the 90s that shit was just fucking rampant like in the 90s through the early thousands that was just the standard like you were a homophobe that's how it was and that doesn't just like like we didn't bring that here you know what i mean that's not to say that you know, there there weren't there wasn't like homophobia and shit present in like pre-colonial Africa or nothing like that. But to say that um, in in the U.S. context, that's just like it was already unacceptable behavior. So it makes sense that an underclass inherits that same sort of belief system. You know what I mean? At the same time, we gotta recognize the fly in the milk experience that can lead black people to internalize the racism and anti-blackness that they face in these non-black spaces, which can lead them to sealing themselves in these conservative echo chambers. This is where the too black for the white kids and too white for the blacks rhetoric comes from. And this is where that I'm one of the good ones and respectability politics mentality that a lot of black conservatives have today comes from. What Gabby is doing is she's trying to overcompensate. She has been brought up in an environment where her like essential being, her identity has been demonized so thoroughly that she thinks the only way she can be better is to reject all the things that she's been born into. Um, and she has that I am one of the good ones mentality. She was brainwashed. Thank you, Wix Fire. She projects that on the other uh she projects that on all of her other peers who are who are in her same experience. Also, like I said before, the manosphere and specifically the black manosphere is explicitly conservative through their misogyny and anti-blackness that fuels white supremacy. And there's a subsection of black people that become black conservatives through that echo chamber. But many other YouTubers have talked about them extensively, so I won't fully dissect them in this video. However, I will sum them up by how they constantly use the term red pill and are constantly transphobic, even though where they got that red pill term from is from the movie The Matrix, 
which is a whole allegory for being trans. And the term red pill from that movie is a trans allegory for how estrogen pills used to look back in the 90s. People like Aeronauk and Sophie from Mars have made in-depth videos about this, and FD went in-depth with an over two-hour video essay about the black manosphere. And FD illustrated the point that I'm trying to make that pretty much... That these guys are fucking stupid. Yeah, pretty much that's all I gotta say about the genuine Uncle Toms in the black conservative space. And also how these people don't hide their conservative ways of thinking through any forms of being pro-black or anything of that nature. And if they do, they fail miserably at it. Unlike this one group of people that I don't see mentioned in the black conservative conversation, for good reason, who are known as the Hotels. Oh my god, what he want now? Well, you fail to realize that we are supposed to be pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps. See, that's what's wrong with you niggas. Always trying to spin the face of the white man. Okay, dawg, do you have anything else to say? Cause going back and forth with you has made me lose some brain cells. Yeah, uh, where are you going with this part about talking about the whole taps? Cause I remember this one time I ran into a whole tap on the side of the road. He was wearing a full body suit with a dashiki hat on and none of the degree weather. I mean, I would've given him some water if he was white, but a monkey like him doesn't deserve my water. Uh, okay. Well, if you could just stop interjecting while I'm trying to talk, then I can finally get to my talking points about the Hoteps with part four. <sighs> okay. Before Uncle Ruckus Jr. comes in and interrupts me again, let me just say that Hoteps are hilarious because they're fucking stupid. And they are genuinely conservative. <laughs> oh, come on! What do you want now? Who are you? And how do these niggas keep getting into my house? Do I have the door unlocked or something? The name is Dr. Malcolm Brown, my brother. And I heard that you called us Hoteps conservative? Well, I mean, yeah, pretty much. Blasphemous things, Beast Tribe. Just blasphemous. How could we possibly be conservative when we have the same pro-black ways of thinking? Okay, let me ask you this. What would you describe yourself as? What do you mean, my brother? Well, I mean, what do you identify as? Oh, well, now that you mentioned it, I have to let you know that we're the original Hebrews, Native Israelites, Indians, Pakistanis, Bangladesh, Chinese, Arabs. My nigga, are Jews, you reading the list Russians, of every Irish, ethnic group on Wikipedia? Portuguese, Germans, Puerto Ricans, Venezuelans, Cubans, Costa Ricans, Albanian, Greek, and Lebanese people, my brother. Yeah, nigga, this is exactly what I was talking about. You're claiming nationalities that aren't yours, and you hide your conservative ways of thinking through being pro-black. Like, no, we are not the same. And I think that it's also hilarious how you claim everything except for your African DNA. Like, make it make sense. See, this is the problem with lost brothers like yourself. You've been indoctrinated by the white men to believe their lies. The cool tip has been activated within you, and you probably only date white women, listen to Lil Nas X, and believe in that gay nonsense that has destroyed the foundation of the black family. I swear to God, she like you need to open your third eye and wake up, cause we was kings, my brother! We was kings! We're into my nigga Lawrence that our ancestors actually accepted queer people and had women leading our communities. But <laughs> anyways, moving on. You've seen them in memes. You've probably seen them in the news and in media more than before because of some really fucked up shit that I'm gonna get into later. And if you're black, then you've more than likely seen them on the side of the road with a pamphlet and a megaphone. Yeah, unfortunately, we're gonna have to talk about the Hoteps in depth for more than five seconds. Cause there's more to them than the memes that are made about them. Yeah, I I, I am so sorry for what y'all about to witness. The origins of the whole text that exists today can mainly be traced back to the Nation of Islam, which is an Islamic and black nationalist movement founded in Detroit, Michigan by founder Wallace D. Far Muhammad in 1930. He started the organization in 1930 to show the African American community a new way to combat the white supremacist and anti-black world that they were living in. Wallace Muhammad had his assistant at the time, Elijah Muhammad, begin another branch of the Nation of Islam in Chicago. And this is where things get interesting because Malcolm X gets brought into the picture. I'm not gonna go too in depth with Malcolm X, so to keep it short, he went to prison for a robbery. While in prison, he converted to Islam and joined the Nation of Islam, 
when he left prison, he met Elijah Muhammad and he quickly became the face of the Nation of Islam and one of the main faces of the Civil Rights Movement because of his fantastic personality and his outstanding skills with public speaking. If you're black, you probably know the stories of some of our people converting to Islam while in jail and seeing men in full body suits on the side of the road, speaking on a megaphone and handing out pamphlets. Yeah, a majority of that came from the Nation of Islam. And that's where it comes from. Anyways, after Malcolm X got assassinated and Elijah Muhammad passed away, Louis Farrakhan took over in 1978. And throughout the 1980s and the 1990s, will continue to grow the Nation of Islam and teach African Americans how to unify themselves in white America. But the thing is that the Nation of Islam has had a long history of being anti-LGBTQ and anti-Semitic. And why I understand why their ideologies turned extreme because of the extreme war that they were living in back then in the early 1900s, unfortunately that rhetoric has influenced and affected the whole steps that exist today. People like Dr. Umar Johnson, Kanye West, Kyrie Irving, Tariq Nasheed, Nick Cannon, and even my boy Kendrick Lamar subscribe to this type of thinking. And I say that whole steps are conservative because they present themselves as pro-black, but because their ideologies aren't steeped in logic or reason, they turn extreme, and their pro-black rhetoric quickly turns into becoming anti-Semitic, xenophobic, misogynistic, homophobic, and transphobic because they think that these people are damaging the black community, which leads them to actually feed into white supremacy more than they realize. Dr. Umar and hoteps like him are pro-black to an extent, because keep in mind, you can't be pro-black and also be anti-LGBTQ, anti-trans, because guess what? There are black people that are trans, that are part of the LGBTQ community. So when I see comments like this that say, you can't say he's not for us, this man is for us, it's like, uh, nah, mm, not really, because he's for a specific group of people, and that specific group is cis, straight, black men and women. I mean, we're talking about the same guy that called LGBTQ plus people sexually confused. So yeah, you can't say that he's for us because in reality, he only supports cis straight black people like me, and that's not cool at all. We know that they can utter the most idiotic shit known to man at times, and it's why we don't take them seriously and keep them in a bubble away from the rest of the world. Like, I'm not gonna lie, some of us try to keep them in house and make them stay on them street corners and not give them any mainstream attention. However, that's starting to change a bit. And yes, unfortunately, I have to talk about Kanye West and some of the other people that I mentioned earlier. So you've probably heard about the shit that Kanye West has been saying and doing recently. Or you've been living under a rock. In which case... Get back under that rock, sweetie. There is nothing good going on up here. It's not worth it. But pretty much, Kanye has said some really anti-Semitic shit and he continues to say conservative shit that is filled with anti-black, misogynistic, and white supremacist rhetoric. It's an issue that has been a huge talking point in the black community for a while now, and other rappers like him from Killer Mike to Lil Wayne have had this conscious to conservative shit that Myola's War talks about in their video about the subject. And when I see people like Dr. Umar, Akon, and the rest of these hoteps defend Kanye when he's going on these anti-Semitic, fascist, and white supremacist rants, it just shows me what I was talking about earlier. Hoteps are really conservative. They hide behind this wall of being pro-black, but once you get past that wall, you'll see them for who they really are. Also, something that really irks me with these hoteps is how they keep getting attention from mainstream media outlets because of what Kanye is saying and doing. Remember, I said that some black people want to keep these hoteps in house and keep them in a bubble away from mainstream media and on them street corners. But sadly, not every black person is in agreement with this. It's why you got some black media outlets sticking a mic in front of Kanye and Dr. Umar's face. And because they start showing these conservative views to the rest of the world, it leads them to go into these white conservative media outlets and spew more anti-Semitic and anti-LGBTQ rhetoric. And from there, it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And do you see why some of us try to keep these niggas on them street corners away from mainstream media? Yeah, hoteps are kind of tricky because on paper sometimes, or like maybe even in like when, when you're discussing like a black issue, they can say all the right things about like those issues at times. Um, I feel like there's a lot of like deification that happens in hotel spaces 
where they believe that the response to dehumanization is to like put people on pedestals so there's a lot of like nubian queen or like that kind of rhetoric happening in those spaces but like that is just dehumanization on another coin like to pedestal like to put people on pedestals or to deify them in those ways is also dehumanizing so i feel like they kind of missed the mark and also personally as someone who has been called a nubian queen that shit is corny and nobody actually likes it um like no one's ever like oh my god he called me a nubian queen and now we're like five years married no like that's never the like you know and and often i find in those spaces when you're not receptive to that kind of um like language or conversation that it's very quick for a hotep to turn on someone um especially black women online uh and i also feel like there's a lot of misogyny that is rampant in those spaces hidden under my new being queen let's build together let's make the black family together and it's like you <laughs> you don't think that black women are on par with you like you believe black women belong in a certain kind of hierarchical space that mimics the white patriarchy and instead of saying that you say i i want to i want to uh, build with a black woman and da, 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 da. and it's like that's why i feel like they're dangerous because they they hide under like the flowery language there's also like the love and light crystal girlies that are like hotep adjacent that are like fix your chakras and like da 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 and then you like scroll a little bit and they're talking about like very turf adjacent like language about genitals and like really intense hateful rhetoric under the guise of divine femininity and um, or like the, the the false dichotomy of masculinity and femininity um, in those spaces. I feel like that's also like a dangerous space because like for all con uh, conservatism and black conservatism specifically, I feel like they prey on what people are looking for when it comes to community. And it is that like the kindness, the uplifting, Gaining, um the the desire to help right a lot of these people gain power in these spaces or start writing the grift by um making their audience believe that they care about them and care is um falsely believed to mean like no accountability or, or um, like I say, like a pacifying kind of like, oh, you you don't do you didn't do anything wrong. It's just those nasty SJWs, you know, like making it an us versus them kind of situation, as opposed to a you versus you situation, um, which is sometimes scarier. Um, so I feel like Hotep's um, very much like uh, capitalize off of that want by using all of that like pro-black language to a community that, that is looking for people who are, are on black people's side which is even more insidious in some cases because like i know people who were just looking for positive influences positive voices on their twitter feed and are now like anti-vax because of of the shit that they say um, and so I think it's very easy while you're looking for community to easily like fall down the rabbit hole um, in those spaces. So yeah, I would definitely say hoteps are, are conservatives with like muscles and dashikis and um, <laughs> uh, yeah, and still like uh, want the black, like pro black family, but nuclear black family, like 
Yeah. It's just that in a perfect world, these hot tubs wouldn't be broadcasted to the rest of the world. In a perfect world, hot tubs will be normal black leftists who support other marginalized groups while being pro-black. Shit, in a perfect world, white and non-black liberals and leftists wouldn't become anti-black when they talk about these black conservatives. Speaking of... What is your malfunction, my brother? What are you talking about? What am I talking about? What, what, what am I talking about? My brother, people like you are why the black community is failing. You want to keep us on them street corners because we tell the truth and know how to fix the black community. Okay, Dr. Brown, tell me, how do y'all plan to fix the black community? Well, Think Peace, since you asked nicely, all we got to do is... One eternity later. See, this is exactly why nobody takes y'all seriously. You always go on the dumbest tangents about the dumbest shit. Like, who do you think is making these whole tech memes about y'all? Cause that's how y'all really be acting. Like, like I'm not kidding. And, and hold on, are you even a real doctor? Uh, I won't comment on the validity of my doctorate degree, but I think that it's funny how you have all this smoke for us, but you never talk about the white, non-black, and even black liberals that act more anti-black than any of the black conservatives that you were talking about at times. This just proves to me that you've been indoctrinated by the white man, and you need to wake up, my brother. Wake up! I was literally about to get into that, but you keep interrupting me. And actually, you and Uncle Ruckus Jr. have been interrupting me all throughout this video. If you would just stop interrupting me, I can move on and talk about that shit with the next part. <sighs> okay, let's just move on. So this part of the video isn't in defense of black conservatives. It's me calling out a problem I see black conservatives face in left-wing spaces. I'll talk about the discrimination they face in right-wing spaces in a minute, but let's go back to the beginning of this video. Now why did I start up the video with a direct call out to white and non-black liberals and leftists and tell them to not leave any anti-black comments about the black conservatives that I was going to talk about? Well it's because throughout my research for this video I saw too many people in this left wing space become anti-black and racist when they started to talk about black conservatives like it was genuinely weird. I didn't do this because I wanted to, I did it because I had to. Because if I didn't, I knew that anti-black comments against these black conservatives were going to be in the comments of this video. If I didn't say anything, some of y'all would have took that as a direct invitation to let the anti-black comments fly out. The fact that I even had to think about that is indicative of a big problem in the liberal slash leftist community. Because I know that we live in a white supremacist world where anti-blackness is the norm, but come on, y'all gotta be better than that. You can talk about these black conservatives without being anti-black or racist. I promise you it's not that hard. Like nigga, I ain't Don Lemon or Van Jones. I'm not gonna let the anti-blackness slide. Y'all need to be better than that. But let's not forget about the discrimination that they face in these right-wing spaces as well. Cause most of these black conservatives think that they can become the reasonable black person within these conservative spaces. But more often than not, they get used by white conservatives for profit and to have a black person support their negative views on the black community. Or they just don't get accepted into these conservative spaces at all. Because these white conservatives are still racist and homophobic. I mean, look at Christian Walker as an example. And now he's trying to rebrand himself from being a conservative grifter to a reasonable conservative. White conservatives look at black conservatives as people that they can use for clicks, likes, and clout. They don't respect them as people. Just look at how white conservative media outlets kept sticking a mic in front of Kanye West's mouth instead of giving him the help that he actually needs. And then when he went off the rails, they tossed him to the side and tried to make themselves look like good people. Just look at how Tucker Carlson will put so many black conservatives on his show. Like, this is a literal racist. You think he gives a single fuck about these niggas? Everybody agreed that segregation was the worst thing this country ever did. Like, these black conservatives are getting used, and they still have to face racism in these conservative spaces, whether they like it or not. Whether they think racism is real or not. It's, um... You are allowed there as long as you are useful. You gotta be the most virulent one almost. You know what I mean? You have to be like the quote unquote, like the tip of the spear or some shit, because if you don't, they gonna put you out. Like your, your position there is predicated entirely upon your usefulness to whoever you are uh, attaching yourself to. Like the moment the Candace Owens stops being useful to um, Ben Shapiro, 
the moment she stops being useless or useful, he will kick her out. She gonna get cut off the payroll. She gonna lose her platform. He gonna say bye, and he gonna pretend he don't know her. Cause that's how that works. Same thing with Clarence Thomas. If Clarence Thomas, say Clarence Thomas ruled on abortion and the opposite. If Clarence Thomas changed his politics tomorrow, they would impeach that nigga and remove him from the Supreme Court. You know what I mean? Like he would be gone, 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 <laughs> gone with a W, gone, like over, uh, over and done with. But then. You gotta, cause this can't stand me, a white liberal neither. You get a white liberal, cause I, see, I saw this happen. I, I, this one I got a hard example for, cause I saw this shit happen on Twitter. They will weaponize your blackness against you because they think that you're bad. Instead of just criticizing your behavior, they got something to say about you being black. It's, it's a similar phenomenon you see like online with like content creators, right? marginalized content creators are expected to, to are, are held to a higher standard than you know their white counterparts you know if you're trans but well, not just their white counterparts but like their whites to straight you know if you're trans if you're a woman if you're black and you say something a little bit out of pocket you're gonna get it worse than if someone like sean said some crazy shit um and that, that same sort of thing happens if you're a black conservative you do something goofy because you're a conservative who is black, you're gonna get it 10 times harder than Alito. There's a reason why they put Sheriff Clark out there in front of everybody. And it's because they know that liberals are gonna do their racist bullshit and then they're gonna be able to use that against everybody else. It's it's like, I wish that white people would just like shut the fuck up for real because it's like y'all just you don't get it you don't understand and that's fine because i don't expect you to understand the depths of it but that means one you need to shut the fuck up two you need to listen to us when we talking and then three when we talk you need to fucking boost us because we know what the fuck we're talking about because we've been there we've been living this shit from like fucking day one I, I don't remember since I had memories. I have been seeing black Israelites, and I knew them niggas was goofy. But it's like we can't help you because you made your choice. You decided to switch sides, and you don't have that good sense of community that can back you up. Your black card is gone because you decided to embrace white supremacist values, and because of that, you don't have support from your own people anymore. I saw this in real time when Kanye said that slavery was a choice in 2018 and how the black community reacted to that. It was like the black community had to let him go because he was too far gone and I hate that for him and for other black conservatives in general because some of these people are genuinely lost and desperately need that good sense of community. But I also hate them at the same time because they think they're these great intellectuals and free thinkers for being the ultimate contrarians but they're not. They need help, and I know you can't save everyone, <sighs> but I wish that I could. I feel like I feel like I'm not explaining my thoughts that well. Okay, all right. I gotta I gotta go somewhere. I gotta um, I gotta show y'all something to really explain my thoughts here. Yeah. First, I think these tribe ad break. Brought to you by our wonderful brothers and sisters at the Think Beast Tribe Patreon. Now, usually, I wouldn't tell you to give your hard earned money to a good for nothing Negro like Think Beast Tribe. But I suppose doing charity for poor monkeys like him is good to do every once in a while. Please consider opening your third eye and joining the Think Beast Tribe Patreon in the link in his bio. And while you're at it, Sign my petition to get Birth of a Nation played across all movie theaters, 24-7-365. If we can get 1,000 signatures on this, I feel like I can send it to Mitch McConnell, and he'll sign the bill to make this a reality. Good for nothing, Negroes. This ought to keep them in their place.
Now go ahead and send me money, yeah! Money cash! Bro, they need to put cocaine back in fucking Coca-Cola can. And, and... <laughs> well, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Um, I think, I think I have this weird empathy for black conservatives, and it's something I didn't really think I had for them until I started writing this video, but I've come to this place to explain these feelings a bit more. So I came to the Stone Mountain Carving to show y'all something, because what you're looking at is the largest confederate monument in the world. And the three confederates that are carved into this mountain are Jefferson Davis, Robert E. Lee, and Thomas J. Stonewall Jackson. The daughters of the confederacy created this carving to rewrite the history of the confederacy from white supremacist nutjobs who fought to keep slavery alive and well to southern white folks who are just super proud of their southern heritage. Like, my family has lived here since the 1980s, and they have stories of seeing the KKK march down Stone Mountain and celebrate this carbon with fireworks shows. I remember when I was five years old coming down here for a field trip, and I asked my teacher who those men were on that mountain, and she had to sit down with me and told me everything about it, and I really haven't been the same since. Ever since I learned about who those men are and what they fought to keep alive, I see this carving and I see the lasting legacy of racism, white supremacy, and slavery in America, and how the upholders of white supremacy can be immortalized and have their history celebrated rather than be seen for who they truly are. I say that because that's what I see when I look at this mountain. But when black conservatives see this mountain, they either support the values that this carving represents for the money, or because they truly believe in it themselves. Like, they'll genuinely support the people that try to keep them enslaved, or they'll support the values that they try to keep alive, which just sucks. And, and, and I think that's why I have this weird teeter-totter empathetic line for black conservatives, because it, it just hurts when this type of thinking is coming from your own people. It's like, this is who you are? You want to represent the value set by these people? It's so stupid. Like, I hate them for that. I hate them for purposely removing themselves from the culture to embrace white supremacy and white supremacist values. But I also hate that for them because they can never get that sense of community, love, and support from their own people back. Even if they did, which would take a lot of work and unpacking to do, most of them aren't trying to do that. So basically, we're stuck at this standstill with black conservatives, where they don't want to change their ways, and we have to leave them behind, and they can never get that sense of community back that they desperately need. And that's the thing, like, we already got to deal with so much. We live in a world where the transatlantic slave trade happened and shifted how the entire world was going to go on from that point. And now we're stuck in this white supremacist, anti-black world where we have to face so much vitriol from so many different communities and systems just because of the color of our skin. And to face the same, the same vitriol from your own people just hurts a, a little bit more, I guess. But hey, you can't save everyone. All I can do is just educate y'all on these political topics through an MP4 YouTube video. But if I changed any black conservatives way of thinking, if I got them to ask more questions about the conservative values that they're representing, then I'm fine with that. Because you can't save everyone. But I wish that I could.
throughout the writing process for this video, I was stressing so hard about trying to not miss any points or claims that these black conservatives make. So for like a week and a half, I just drowned myself from research and watched as many videos from black conservatives and videos about black conservatives as I could. It was an information overload that I had to take breaks from for my mental sanity. And this is ultimately why I titled this video, The Confusing Nature of Black Conservatives. Because I swear to God, if you let them keep talking for more than 5 seconds, you'll realize instantly that the shit that they say and do is genuinely absurd. And there's so many subsections of black conservatives that exist, from the black right wing, to the manosphere, to the whole tips, and so on. We found out that like... Most of Herschel Walker's um, supporters were white people. So that just goes to show you, like, one, all skin folk and kin folk. But two, it's just like, we may feel like there's a lot more black conservatives than ever before. We may feel like there's a lot of them, but studies are showing it ain't that many of them. It's just a lot of loud fuckers on the internet. When you go out in public, a lot of them don't, a lot of people don't even share their political views. They leave out so much information with the shit that they talk about. And I just wanted to get into why that is, how they go about being this way, and also bring up all the nuance in the black conservatism discourse. My goal for this video was to educate the masses about black conservatives, and I know that I'm currently stuck in small YouTuber purgatory, but if this video gets seen by black people who are stuck in conservative households, and I gave you some counter responses to say to your family or friends when they bring up these conservative talking points, then I did what I was supposed to do. If I got a black conservative to watch this video and they started asking themselves more questions on what they're doing and what they're representing, then that'd be great. Cause at the end of the day, I'm just a young nigga trying to educate others on what I see from my lens, my perspective. And if I did that for you, then that makes the struggle of drowning myself from research and consuming black conservative content to be knowledgeable on their talking points all worth it for me. But yeah. That's all I gotta say. So to wrap this up, uh, thank you for watching this video. Like, thank you so much. And um, a huge thanks to the big and be them women them and man them. I had interview for this video. Thank you for sharing your perspective on this topic. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, subscribe to my Patreon and then look at my bio if you want to support this channel a bit more. Uh, subscribe to the channel and like the video if you want to see more content like this. And yeah, I will see you in the next Think Peace Tribe video slash production. <laughs> Alright, bye y'all.